immortalism is a movement claiming that death can be defeated by science and promoting this goal as a major priority for research. One of the major figures of immortalism is a British computer scientist turned into an autodidact biogerontologist, Aubrey de Grey. De Grey is very famous among biogerontologists. He has developed an anti-aging research program called SENSE, Strategies for Engineered Negligible Senescence. He is both an accepted figure and set apart from the community. The explanation is that the unrealistic nature of immortalism clashes with the precision of, it, of its research programs. It is actually difficult to answer the question, is immortalism a scientific program? The standard criteria of scientificity as proposed by philosophers have been applied without much success against sense. Is the program testable? That is, does it have implications that can be put to experimental test? For sure, it is, in principle. But in practice, it is so radical and difficult to implement that it is impossible to tell really whether it is overambitious to the point of not being scientific. De Grey became famous around 2005. In an article in Technology Review entitled Do you want to live forever? Newland wrote that De Grey is convinced that he has formulated the theoretical means by which human beings might live thousands of years indefinitely, in fact. Perhaps theoretical is too small a word. De Grey has mapped out his proposed course in such detail that he believes it may be possible for his objective to be achieved within as short a period as 25 years. This is a high-risk project in at least two senses. First, it involves a series of very radical interventions whose consequences are unknown and might be dangerous. Second, it sounds very likely that it will not work. To that objection, de Grey has a very sober and confident response. Aging could be described as a reasonably small set of accumulating and eventually pathogenic molecular and cellular changes in our bodies, each of which is potentially amenable to repair. And this is where scientists start to feel less sure that De Grey's pro project is just science fiction. Indeed, science consists in a list of primary factors of aging, seven in fact. It also consists in an engineering approach to the problem rather than in a traditional approach to basic science. The goal-driven orientation of an engineer rather than the curiosity-driven orientation of the basic scientists. His ideas, or parts of them, have been published in some high-quality science journals. He has indefatigably defended them in major conferences. He has created a foundation to fund research that falls into the science program and a journal, Rejuvenation Research. The SANS program is first formulated in a paper published in 2002. There is a more developed version of it in De Grey's book Ending Aging in 2007. The current version, as of 2020, is presented as a very simple table. On the third column of this table, there is a list of forms of aging damage. Most of the time in biogerontology, people do not list forms of damage but rather the pathways that produce them. For instance, instead of death-resistant cells, they will mention cellular senescence as one of the processes of aging, the output being these death-resistant cells themselves. Instead of mentioning intracellular aggregates, they will point out the loss of proteostasis that characterizes the aging cell and produces intracellular aggregates. The other terms in the table are extracellular aggregates, 
that is garbage produced by cells that ends up aggregating in large extracellular molecules responsible for various dysfunctions. An example is beta amyloid that form plaques in the brain of patients with Alzheimer's disease. Mitochondrial mutations, which are the main result of the normal production of radical oxygen species in the mitochondria, cell loss and tissue atrophy, which result from the exhaustion of stem cells, and more surprising, cancerous cells. I am saying this is surprising because cancerous cells are never mentioned as aging damage, but rather as a downstream consequence of aging damage. For instance, the accumulation of mutations in cells may result in the apparition of a cancer. The second column proposes interventions that are supposed to counter the corresponding aging damage. Each of these forms of intervention consists actually in the choice of one of the many theoretically possible strategies. Take for instance the removal of telomere lengthening mach machinery. It is far from being the only strategy possible against cancer. In fact, it is a, a rather marginal one in the field of cancer therapies research. The same goes for every other strategy. The first column, in the end, is the name given to the strategy and a link to a more detailed presentation of the strategy. Note that the phrasing of the SANS program, the general engineering strategy, the choice of the type of damage, and the choice of a particular strategy for each of them has not evolved in almost 20 years. What has is the specific research programs that have been funded. This may be explained by the fact that SENSE consists essentially in goals that are so remote that the progress of research can hardly help update them, except at a very low level in the hierarchy of the claims of the theory. It is also worth emphasizing that sense is not a theory, although it is often called thus. It does not aim to describe what aging consists in or to understand it. De Grey is very clear and very explicit about that. The process is incredibly complex and it would take decades to clarify all the interactions involved in it. And this is unnecessary. If one conceives of a way to prevent it from happening. And this is what sense consists in. Not a description of aging, but a strategy to stop it. Is sense worthy of scientific consideration? In 2005, the journal Technology Reviews launch, launched a contest. Who would refute sense? The best refutation articles, among which an article by Estep and colleagues, were published along with de Grey's answers to each of them. An independent jury was in charge of deciding who won, de Grey or his opponents. The result is expressed by one of the members of the jury, famous geneticist Craig Vanter, who wrote, Estep and colleagues, in my view, have not demonstrated that sense is unworthy of discussion, but the proponents of sense have not made a compelling case for it. The question had actually been discussed by de Grey in two earlier articles in 2000 and 2002, where he put forward theoretical and philosophical arguments to show that his program was not pseudoscience. There has been an extra round of investigation in the, of the question in the journal EMBO Reports, again in 2005 and 2006. Although SANS is presented as an engineering program rather than a theory, it would be a mistake not to acknowledge that it also has a theoretical core. It consists in three claims. One, there, is, there are seven forms of damage of aging, D1 to D7, and seven forms only. Two, deleting D1, D2, D3 to D7 will stop aging altogether. And three, neutralizing or limiting one of them will delay aging. Each of these theoretical claims is disputable. First, there is no evidence that all forms of aging are summarized in D1 to D7. De Grey says it is likely, 
that there is no other. Because they have been discovered a long time ago, and in spite of the acceleration of research on aging, no other form of damage has been discovered. However, when de Grey later mentioned an oft-cited article, The Hallmarks of Aging, by Lopez Utin and colleagues, 2013, which lists nine hallmarks, he says that the two lists basically refer to the same damages, but categorize them differently. This is disputable in many regards. Let's just mention two reasons. First, de Grey mentions cancer as a form of damage of aging, which Lopez Otin does not in any way. Second, de Grey does not mention genomic instability or epigenetic alterations, or considers that their consequences are reducible to cancer, which is highly doubtful. Would a deletion of all these forms of damage stop aging, as T2 claims? Actually, there are two general arguments against that. The first one is that targeting damages rather than their causes may not be the right strategy. To take one example, it may prove impossible to efficiently remove advanced glycation and products, age, from the extracellular matrix without damaging it whereas it may be possible to prevent them from accumulating in the first place. The second one is that any list of interventions against each of the seven damages, whatever it consists in, would substitute a new functional organization to the standard functional organization of the human organism. The effects are unpredictable and might as well be severely dysfunctional and limit lifespan, or maybe substitute a new series of aging damages. Would a deletion of one of these forms of damage delay aging as T3 claims? Unlike engineers, the adoption of whose methodology de Grey considers his main conceptual contribution to solving the problems of aging, Biologists do not approach physiological events as distinct entities that have no effect on any others. Each of the Gray's interventions will very likely result in unpredictable and uncalculable responses in the biochemistry and physics of the cells he is treating, not to mention their extracellular milieu and the tissues and organs of which they are a part. In biology, everything is interdependent. Everything is affected by everything else. Though we study phenomena in isolation to avoid complicating factors, those factors come into play with a vengeance when, it, when in vitro becomes in vivo. The fearsome concerns are many. A little lengthening of the telomere here, a bit of the genetic material from a soil bacterium there, a fistful of stem cells, the next thing you know, it all explodes in your face. Sense is not limited to this theoretical core and actually consists in a series of engineering programs justified by this theoretical core. They consist in seven biotechnological programs of intervention. I1 to I7, the idea being that each is acting upon one of the forms of damage of aging. Three main arguments have been raised against this part of the SENSE program. The first one is that the effects of these diverse technologies would prove incompatible. De Grey answers that if so, they would be adjusted to one another. However, it may prove a very long task to find the right combination and they would not all be testable on organisms, let alone on human organisms. The second argument is that none of these approaches has ever been shown to extend the lifespan of any organism, let alone humans. The third argument is that those who work in science or know a good deal about how science progresses understand how difficult it is to select among many attractive ideas the few that might actually pan out. Those of us who work on cancer, know 
that the inhibition of telomerase is one among many interesting ideas that might one day help to control some forms of human neoplasia. However, we also know that the ablation of telomerase activity might have serious side effects on stem cells and lymph lymphocyte function, might fail to work in some tumor types, might select for neoplastic cells with alternative ways to avoid growth inhibition, and has not yet been shown to prevent or treat cancer either in humans or in animal models. Most therapeutic ideas, even the most plausible, come to nothing. In preclinical studies or clinical research, the proposed interventions are found to be toxic or induce unwelcome side effects, are mooted by more successful ideas, or most often simply fail to work as hoped. In the end, there is a last layer in the SENSE program. The predictions it makes. It can be summarized thus. P1. Each of the techniques of intervention I1 to I7 will take time and progress at a given rate. P2. Each progress in each technique will buy sufficient additional lifetime for current researchers to improve them, to improve them enough to gain yet more additional lifetime, and so on, until unlimited lifetime is achieved. P3. There is a high probability that biological immortality is within reach. Although P2 is possible, it is not at all likely. De Grey started his project some 15 years ago, and there is still no trace of an intervention that would buy him some extra time. It is possible that it happens, but there is no guarantee that it will. It is overly optimistic, even in the face of just one of these interventions. In some, the SENSE program is a very stimulating object of reflection, but it is highly unlikely that it will work. It is probably a pioneering research program. What makes it unlikely to work is that it is one of a kind. Take cancer. There's not just one lab working on a cure, but thousands of them with different approaches and working on infinitely many aspects of cancer. There has been huge investment in cancer treatment since the 1970s at least, yet in spite of limited progress, there still is no cure against cancer. What are the odds that only one research program among the many alternatives would work? In the end, sense is not implausible because its formidable goal is to stop aging. It is implausible because it is one of the very few systematic research programs to do that. However, it is unquestionable that the existence of SENSE has played a role in biogerontology and has dis disinhibited many researchers. Instead of just talking about the study of aging, they now dare say that they are looking for interventions against aging. Their goal is not immortality, but rather to achieve a delay in aging and its consequences, mainly age-related diseases.